Hey, welcome back to Let's Fix Something. I'm Jason, and old Rat Cat here is going to be getting some mods done to her. Roll the intro. Hey, spoiler alert. This modification went awesome. Couldn't be happier with it. So it's a little bit long in content, you know, roughly 17, 18 minutes or so. And it's going to get even longer at the back side because if you're looking to do a single carb or a, a twin carb setup like this one, I'll have all the jet sizes and charts and some other information. So uh, pitter patter, let's get to work. So this is the poster child of why I'm doing this. So this is my 1971 custom Puma. Now I used a 1974 CDI 340 free air stock bone stock unmodified from an El Tigre. So this one has dual VM34s factory. This engine runs so good. I can let it sit there and idle for 30 minutes, never follow a plug. Um, this thing starts predictably every single time, hot and cold. I know exactly what it's gonna do and it does the same thing every time. So you can see these adapters in here that go right to the cylinders. Again, this is a Kawasaki 340 free air. I'm doing a Kawasaki 340 fan. So we are gonna have some obstacles which we'll work through, but dual VM34s, this new project will be jetted identically to these. There is the Makuni dual outlet fuel pump, same pump that I'm gonna be using in Ratcat. Mint. All right, so here's everything laid out on the table. Uh, we're gonna go into this in detail in the description where all the part numbers are where you can buy all this stuff. But for now, we're just gonna do a bit of a visual description. So I picked up at a swap meet a dual outlet fuel pump and its respective overhaul kit from Vertex. Uh, you can buy these pretty cheap from Dennis Kirk. I'll also put a link to that. I have a pair of VM34s. I did take them apart and note the jets, but I purchased all of the jetting for the 1973 uh, engines that were used in the El Tigre. Uh, you can see I've highlighted all the jet numbers. So I have purchased pilot jets, main jets, needles, and needle jets to go into these VM34s. I may have to pick up a gasket yet for the bowl, but I have everything I need to clean these carburetors and jet them identically as to my Puma engine. Next. This is the most important part of this dual carburetor project is to get these Makuni adapters. Um, so I picked these up at a, uh, from a friend of mine, but these are Makuni adapters. I'll put a part number. Um, I don't know. I have not been able to find these. I just got lucky and found them from a friend of mine uh, who was at a swap and uh, just got lucky there. But to do this dual swap, you're going to need these adapters. There are some phenolic ones that were made. Um, I've only seen pictures of them, but uh, that's key are these adapters. I bought their respective boots for manufacturing supply and of course their gaskets. Next, um, I've got two new cables. I got a throttle cable that you can buy at Dennis Kirk and a choke cable you can buy at Dennis Kirk, but they don't have any ends on them. So I did purchase the new plunger kits from Dennis Kirk for the Makuni carburetor. Hopefully this will be everything that's complete. All right, so on this conversion, one of the biggest headaches is gonna be trying to figure out which control you've got and which one that you're gonna use. So this is a 70 and 71 control. You can see there's no switches. The cable goes right into the control, easy cheesy. This is 72 and 73, so I'll have a kill switch here. But the problem is, is Articat put this safety device in here. And what that does, that grounds out, just like in this one. It grounds out when the cable is loose. And it raises all sorts of hell and all sorts of problems. So I haven't really figured out how to use a 7273 control with all of this mechanism here. This is a 74 control where it's got the rubber fairing that's tied in. Still all the same safety device, but the same problem exists trying to figure out how to tie this cable into one of these controls. So the last part is this is a stock paddle 
that goes with this, any of these uh, pumper carbs here. Your Tillotsons and your Walbros use this short throw paddle. So what I've got is a long throw paddle that uh, gets you a longer throw, but the holes aren't going aren't to line up. See, So you have to make this custom throttle, which I did on my Puma, which I'll show you guys in just a second. But this gives you enough throw for that Makuni carburetor. I tried it with this one. You're going to get about three-quarters of 70s throttle on your Makunis. It's just not enough throw to get the cutaways all the way up. So something to think about. You're probably going to be your best bet is to find and pick up a used 70 to 71 control, no electrical, and the cable goes right in the end of it. It gets rid of your kill switch, but safety's dumb. All right, so here's a detail of the components that I use to build uh, this throttle. So this is the same thing I did on my Puma. I know I've had uh, other guys I know have done Makuni conversions and they've done the exact same thing. It works out perfect. Key to this is just some 18 gauge steel and build yourself a couple of relocation brackets. Key is that they're the same. And again, like an LT gray paddle that's longer here up front. And uh, I'm using a 7071 control. So I'll put this thing together and you guys can see in detail um, what this looks like. So here's the throttle, you know, mocked up again. Um, you can see that with this this relocation of this front pivot, it does make your throttle, you know, stick out a little bit further. But, um, you know, I was taught this from a guy named Kurt uh, here in Wisconsin, and I've had other guys do this, and it works awesome. So um, anyways, this gives you way more throw than you're going to need. Um, the key is just having, you know, that relocation at pivot so this is just a bushing i had kicking around uh, i'm reusing the pins on a normal you know arctic cat throttle because i got so many of them but anyways this gives you uh the ability to use this long paddle to get your throw that the makuni carbs are going to need so um i don't know it's about the best look that you can get uh again i just have some bushings and stuff you know knocking around but uh get everything painted up and we'll stick around and Make her go. All right, so here's the final detail of that throttle setup. You can see we got plenty, plenty of throw that we wouldn't have had before. Here you can see that bushing stack up, and those pins. And that cable, right from Dennis Kirk, goes right into this 70 and 71 control so all right so here's a scrap 340 cylinder from a t1b kawasaki so this is that adapter and i've had people tell me oh my god the jetting's going to be all wrong the ports are all wrong but if you look here at this port this is actually smaller so the fan motors actually have a larger you know intake port so if you look at it 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 lines up and there's no porting problems same thing here if you take a gasket and you lay one over the top of the other um, the fan motor intake port is actually larger so uh, arguably I may have to jet you know something down a little bit but I know I've got that baseline starting point with all the factory specs uh, again, that second argument of, well, the, 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 the free air motor has got better, you know, porting. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's smaller and it's going to consume, you know, less air. So I don't know. Could be wrong. I may be learning this together, but for right now, I think we're good to go there. So I did suffer one small setback. So as I was putting the adapters on the cooling tin, um, I noticed that on the inboards, look how far out this port goes. And if you put the adapter on there, you don't have anything for surface area. So here's my salvage cylinder. And if I put this adapter on, well, it, you know, it screws on everything. But that's all 
the ceiling area to have is like a sixteenth of an inch. So, to combat that, got some 18 gauge steel and I fabricate up a custom cooling tin that gives this adapter the ceiling surface area it needs right here on the inboard. Because you can see these inboard ports extend really far over. Well, now with a new cooling tin, I got lots of seal area for my gasket that you get from Jerry's new old stock cat parts, part number 3000-654. So anyways, small setback, but be advised you're going to have to make a new cooling tin if you want to do the same project. Bam. Okay, so we're all mocked up, ready to go. If you guys need bolts, this is a uh, metric six by one inch. But anyways, uh, gaskets on the front side of the tin, these gaskets on the back side of the tin. So I want to bring you guys in for a little bit deep dive into the weeds on engine angles. So a standard Kawasaki engine on a normal engine plate is 15 degrees. So it's tipped 15 degrees forward. The problem is that the stock intake is tipped another 15 degrees. So that puts your carburetor at a 30 degree angle. Now we're going to take a look at uh, McCooney's recommendation, but it's max of 20 degrees. Check that out. So that means that this carburetor is going to be sitting at 30 degrees. For you guys wanting to do, do a very simple, single McCooney swap using the stock intake and a different rubber boot, kind of becomes a problem. Let me bring you in closer. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you can see we've got our digital protractor here. Fifteen degrees. Here's your McCooney carburetor. Is at twenty nine degrees. Translated, that's level. Like that's what your fuel level is going to be doing in the bowl. Now, arguably, can you just drop your uh, you know, drop your bowl level to try and compensate for that. You know, maybe, uh, maybe you can raise it up because this is the overflow. Can you raise this up so it's a little bit high? You know, maybe, I don't know, but just look at that drastic angle on your fuel. That's, that's quite a bit. So, um, I've seen guys do this where they've got an intake that they've made and then they have a tip down adapter. I mean, I'm sure you could build something a lot nicer than that, but I got this on a part sled. But you can see uh, somebody has tried this and they just put a, a rubber hose on here that meets up with uh, the outlet of the carburetor. But, you know, something like this, if you were to build something, uh, that's another idea. But you can see that, you know, this intake has another 15 degrees on it on top of your engine. So again, your carburetor is at 29 degrees. So something to think about. I've only got to deal with a 15 degree tip because I'm going to be running straight on the induction flanges. But anyways, for you guys wanting to do singles, just simply do a McCooney swap single per single. Eh, that's a little bit of an issue. All right, so here we are going back together. That was that was kind of a challenge. There's a lot of stuff going on here. You got a gasket, a tin, a gasket, a flange, and eight fasteners. That's that's a lot. That's a lot going on right here. So, anyways, putting the boots on, lock washers, good to go. All right, so here's the final install. Dual VM 34s. Brand new choke cables, brand new throttle cables, both carbs are synced. A Makuni dual fuel pump, been resealed. All new fuel lines, and uh, yeah. I gotta be honest. I'm
pretty happy right now. This thing runs awesome. It's been idling for 10 minutes and it just sits there idling. So, big old greasy thumbs up. Hey, I hope you guys like the mod to Rat Cat here. Uh, there's some other mods. There's going to be another video, so stay tuned for that. So, uh, although not sponsored, special thanks to Dennis Kirk. Uh, you know, it's because you guys are there that a lot of us with vintage sleds can keep these things alive. Same thing with manufacturing supply. Thank you very much. Uh, huge thanks to Bob Cycle Supply in St. Paul, Minnesota for all my jetting. They get one-stop shop. And uh, lastly, Thanks to Mike Lacklore in Northern Minnesota. He's a pumper guard guy, so a Walbro and a Tillotson guy, but he understands the, the, the McCoonies. He understands the desire to run them, and he was nothing but supportive and helpful along the entire process. I got a thumbs up from him, so I'm, I'm hoping to say this thing was a win. So thanks, Mike, for all your help. Thank you guys for watching. Pitter Patter, and we'll see you in the next one.